like super long, it's an integrate between two species. So it's one of those that's going to debunk uh, species theory actually uh, with subspecies and things like that. This one is just called the dusky. There's a western uh, pygmy and then there's a dusky pygmy. These guys have been tested to be integrates. So, yeah, that's a headshot of one. Okay, so uh, this is just uh, photographing that uh, dusky pygmy rattlesnake. Um, this lens is the uh, Canon 100 macro lens. It was a real, it, it's really a story the way I bought this lens. Uh, I found this online, this guy was selling it. Um, I contacted him and said, hey man, I really want to buy your lens, I'm going into wildlife and I want to shoot macro. Then he said, okay, fine, give me an address and say, I'm doing a shoot in this area, uh, you can come and meet me there. Uh, I went there and he was doing like headshots for a CEO of some company. Um, he had the whole, the whole room with all his lights set up. So he said, you want to plug your stuff into all the lights and shoot this penny? Because I bought a macro lens, right? So my first shot with that lens was actually just shooting a coin, but with all this studio lighting. Yeah. yeah. So I tried the lens and asked a bunch of questions, and he knew I was a student, so I didn't know anything I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but when I gave him the money, it was like $450. Um, after I talked to him, he said, uh, just give me four. Okay, I took out $400 and I gave it to this guy. He took the money and just put it in his pocket and shook my hand and never counted it. So there are some things about Americans that I find very, very endearing and that's why I really like it there. Uh, there's a whole, there's a thing called Southern Comfort. Um, the, the, the truest gentleman I've met, uh, gentleman I've met in Texas. So they are really, really nice men. Uh, they're very trusting of other people. Uh, they, they judge people by talking to them. And so, yeah, that, that's that lens. Okay. So this is the other photo that uh, I, got, I, I submitted and got something for. Uh, this is a Midland brown snake. Earlier we saw the Texas brown snake. This is the Midland brown snake. Okay. And then we went to Georgia. Um, I tried very hard to find a photo, but I couldn't find it. This is the Pigeon Mountain salamander. Doesn't look very flashy, but this is an endemic salamander that's only on Pigeon Mountain. And in Pigeon Mountain, it's only in the caves. And these caves have entrances that are just holes in the rock. That you literally, that the holes are no much more than the width of your body that you have to slide in. So you slide down this little thing and you don't really think about coming out because you know that salamander's in there. <laughs> so you get down, you, your feet hit the ground, it's squelchy, you know, so it's like a sound and you look up with your headlamp and the wall is just lined with salamanders. Because outside it can be 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, inside it's a constant 60. Yeah, so caves maintain a constant temperature. Um, these salamanders have no predators in there. It's way too cold for a snake to want to go in. Uh, snakes don't really eat these, uh, some do. But these animals are just sitting out in the open there. So this is that uh, Pigeon Mountain salamander. Um, like I said, not very flashy, but the whole journey trying to get it. And then coming out without like breaking your camera was quite interesting. The rock is not rough or anything, it's slick smooth from years and years of that draft. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I would really have liked to find a photo of the hole, but I couldn't. Uh, also there we found, uh, uh, it's quite hard to pronounce, the Yon Hello Sea uh, Salamander. So these guys are a bit more quirky. Uh, they're actually on one of the cover of the field guides in that area. Okay, so um, then I finished that job and I came back to Singapore. Uh, and I, I started working in uh, NPARCS. I worked for NPARCS for three years and then I left in 2011 and I told my friends there, I'll come back and help every three years. So 2015 was my first time to go back. Uh, incidentally, 2018 is my next time to go back, but it's not really the best time to go back now, for some reason. You know? <laughs> We've got a, a, a certain guy there. Uh, I don't really fancy him. <laughs> so I don't really want to go support him. Anyway, 2015, it was still Obama. Uh, I went back. <laughs> uh, I went to Arizona. Okay, uh, what's there to say about Arizona? Okay, so this is the, the welcome to Arizona. Uh, this guy was in the middle of the road. Uh, that's a western diamondback rattlesnake. 
So the same ones that we've seen in Texas, but I've never seen one that red. It was beautiful, and he was really crossing the road. Ellison needs to do this thing where they keep their head pointed at you when they move, so he was just slithering, slithering across the road with his head propped up and, at you like that. Okay, this is the habitat there. Uh, this is very southern Arizona. You fly into Tucson, and from Tucson you drive. The whole area is called the Chiricahua Mountain Range. The Chiricahua Mountains has four peaks. On each of these peaks, there's this endemic subspecies of rattlesnake that you try to find. Uh, I went looking very hard for one. Didn't find it. <laughs> but this is the habitat. Some more habitat. Um, yeah, this is uh, on the top of uh, this ridge that we climbed. Uh, this shot doesn't show it, but there were buzzards, you know, uh, turkey and uh, black vultures just circling us. They are just waiting for you to drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> and they really are. <laughs> they follow mammals that are stranded. So yeah, we didn't get eaten. Uh, that's it. Um, oops. Why did we do that? You pressed it. Yeah, you pressed it. Yeah, I can something. see now. Uh, Aspect, is it? Yeah, you Sorry. Okay, now there you go. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, um, that's a huge landslide that just like, flattened the forest there. Arizona has lots of these uh, limestone rocks, um, really good for herbs. What's so special about Arizona um, is Arizona goes through a monsoon season. They call it the monsoon, it's not the real monsoon. <laughs> yeah, it's the real monsoon. <laughs> but in August, uh, it's when the rain's coming. I went there in August. It didn't really rain. It was really windy. <laughs> yeah. But that's the season to hunt there. Of any state in the US, Arizona has the most rattlesnake species. 14 of them. I found eight in that this trip. You will, you will see all eight. I need to go back and find the rest. Uh, I can get to about 12. The last two are those like endemic ones in the top. They are very hard to find. Okay. Uh, brilliant sunsets. And at night, yeah, Milky Way just lights up. Yeah. So I don't do like astrophotography. I'm not good at this stuff. It's just like slap on the wide angle lens and just take a shot. A long exposure shot. Yeah. So stars litter the sky. And yeah, that's your. Not again. Go back. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay, never mind. That's your Milky Way. Okay. Mm. We will learn about rattlesnakes here. Oh, where's the sound? So now I think I have to put the volume on. Let's try it again. shed their skin, they get one bead. That, this piece is called one bead. Uh, in the bead, they have, I've had, like dissected a rattle before, it's just loose bits of like hardened scale that rattle. Um, but that's not what's making the noise. The noise is actually made by the two sections hitting each other like that. Yeah, so that's what makes the rattle noise. People think there's something inside, so I actually cut in to see what's inside. It's a dead one. Uh, in lab, we cut a lot of stuff. Um, it's just the different segments hitting against each other. That's how they rattle. Okay. So uh, we can start counting rattlesnakes here. Uh, this is the uh, rich nosed rattlesnake. Um, this one is called Corvus willardi. Uh, up in the mountains, that really rare one I was talking about is a subspecies of this guy. 
So it has uh, its name is Crotalus willardii something. You know what that something is for that snake? Its subspecies was Obscurus. <laughs> so it was really obscure. It was a very hard snake to find. But rich nose rattlesnakes are really, really beautiful. They've got these markings that make them really, really striking. They're not very big. So here's number one. Uh, here's number two. We saw this guy uh, rattle earlier. This is the uh, banded rock rattlesnake. This is Lepidus. Oh, I made a mistake there. Okay. Number three, uh, the black tail rattlesnake. So this guy has very striking markings. Uh, one of the snakes that I missed there was a uh, tiger rattlesnake. I didn't see that one. It's something like this, but it's different. The black tail, the molossus, all have that black tails. And you can see by the number of um, beats he has on his rattle, or more than an hour. Okay. And then you have your Arizona black rattlesnake. Uh, so if you're a rattlesnake fan, these slides are really exciting. But if not, you can just like uh, marvel at uh, pretty snakes. So the black rattlesnake is a completely dark uh, species that is really cool. Uh, this was that same one I, we had in the middle of the road. This was that Atrox, your common western diamond black rattlesnake. Sorry? It's very red. Very red, yeah. It was a very red individual, very pretty. It's a big female. And this is uh, Scutulatus, your Mojave rattlesnake. So this guy has a reputation. Uh, but he wasn't, they're not really very feisty. Uh, in, should I say that? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, someone say something? What's feisty? Oh, feisty. Oh, feisty means they can be a little bit, um, I won't say, not, not really aggressive, but they can be a little bit uh, anxious, yeah. They, they might uh, respond more <laughs> vigorously towards you. I don't want to say any negative words. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Scutulatus is very interesting. It's one of the rattlesnakes that actually has neurotoxin in, it, neurotoxin in its venom. So neurotoxin, as we know, uh, is confined to your elapids, your cobra crates and corals, and your sea snakes. But uh, he doesn't have a pure neurotoxin. A lot of the rattlesnakes are cytotoxic. cytotoxic. They have a mixture of toxins. They're cytotoxic or myotoxic or hemotoxic. So uh, your muscles and your blood is what the venom affects. Uh, about venom, don't be very scared of it if you understand it. Venom is basically a protein. So we all eat protein, right? It's a protein with its amino acid chain with just something not here but there. <laughs> so that makes it like super foreign to our body. That's what venom does. So venom is a, a, peptide, a polypeptide chain. So um, that's your Mojave. Uh, here's your prairie. We saw him at the start. Uh, prairie was the was big enough and um, what's the word we use? Not feisty. Vigorous enough <laughs> uh, to actually display like that. So yeah, I, this was found this guy. I was like, I took my knees and trying to take as many photos as I can. Very beautiful. These guys do not need to be touched or posed. They just do it for you. It's like the perfect shot each time. Okay. And then we had the sidewinders. These guys are so cool. I only found one. Yeah, this is the one that lives in sandy areas mm -hmm. and moves across the terrain by the sidewinding motion. Mm -hmm. snakes, snakes move through their environment by uh, mainly four different modes of locomotion. Mm -hmm. This one's called a sidewinder, so it does this sidewinding action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's really cool about this guy are the um, upturned supraocular scales it has there. So it almost gives it this horn. Yeah. So this guy buries himself in the sand with just the top of his head sticking out and there's a little lizard. Yeah. That's uh, you get sidewinders in other places as well. The common name sidewinder is used in um, the Middle East. Um, yeah, Middle East sandy areas where there are sidewinders. So do you guys find this cute? Good, right? Okay, just in case anybody went E, which I never got, so that's great. Uh, I'm almost at the end of my talk. But the last two slides are the two baby rattlesnakes that we found. And they are super cute. If you're not uh, converted yet, <laughs> that's his first button. <laughs> he can't rattle yet. It's his first one. Yeah. So this is a baby uh, Mojave rattlesnake. And the last one, yeah, that's your baby uh, Western Diamond rattlesnake. So he's got 
almost two. Uh, this part will start to switch so then he can do his first buzz. Yeah, probably after his first year. Okay, and that's it. Uh, to end, my favorite animal ever. Go. Okay, again, like I said, uh, this is just a concise version. It already took more than an hour. Uh, I really can't go through everything there, but I'll be glad to discuss. <coughs>